Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm coming to you from my laptop computer camera <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, I just I'm trying to upload something for you so you'll see it probably before you see this one. But anyway, it's some more predictive programming. It's a CGI. It was made in 2007. Um, let's see, we were watching I Pet Goat 2 last night on Gratitude and Team Jesus and going over that again. I think that was made around the sea. The, Kathy looked it up. I, it was 2000 something. It might have been 2007. I don't remember. But anyway, the point is, it was made quite a long time ago. Oh, yeah, I think it was 20 years ago. Anyway, the point is, these little CGIs they put together, they're. It's like, you know, I was trying to tell you before, Satan's got to tell us what he's going to tell us. He's got to tell us what he's going to do before he does it. And he uses Hollywood, movies, series, The Simpsons, advertising, and things like these little videos that he has his people put together. Oh, yes, he does. And he tells us what he's going to tell us. And like I said, in that video that's trying to upload right now, the Word of God says in Amos 3, 7, Surely the Lord God does nothing until he reveals it to his servants, the prophets, first. And what has he been saying lately? Oh, my goodness. This volcano that's about to break off and cause a tsunami is the fiery kickoff event before the rapture of the bride. It'll be kind of simultaneous. We won't be injured. His bride will not be injured. And those who call upon his name will be provided for also. All right, let me get on. This morning, as I was praying, this came to my, this scripture came to my remembrance. You have no need for any man to teach you, or you have the Holy Spirit of God, or something like that. You have no need for any man to teach you. And I was like, Lord, i got to look that up. So I get on and I typed in the search bar. For you have no need for any man to teach you. And it pulls up 1 John 2, 27. And I read it. And here's how it goes in the NASB 95. As for you, the anointing which you received from him abides in you and you have no need for anyone to teach you but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you you abide in him this is if it's just so sad that so many people chose to just get all their scriptural their scriptural and spiritual education from a man behind the pulpit without going to the scriptures themselves and learning what they needed to learn with the help of the Holy Spirit not their own understanding anyway I was led to back up and start reading before that the promise is eternal life it's titled but then I was led to go on back to the beginning and read the whole chapter. So I'm going to. And if you don't want to listen to me reading to you the Word of God, you could end it here and go to 1 John chapter 2 and read this for yourself. It starts off talking about the title in NASB is called Christ is our Advocate. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now, you know he's talking to the Gentiles or it could be some Jews that converted to Christianity that he's talking to. All we know is this letter is from John, the Apostle John, okay? Uh, and this, I'm sure, was spread around to all the churches that were up and running back then. Okay, 
and the Holy Spirit and Father God saw to it and Lord Jesus that this got put into the Holy Bible and kept there. They allowed certain books to be pulled out, but only so many and said no more. The word was kept preserved where we would know what Jesus wanted us to believe and how he wanted us to live. Now, by the time John got around to writing this and passing it around, don't you think that a whole bunch of these people were born again, gave their hearts to the Lord like years before? Yes, they did, even if it was just the year before. Do you not think they probably sinned some since then? Yes, they did. And what's he telling them? I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, which we all do, the word says that, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody is perfect the day they become born again. It says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. He died for everybody. Everybody on that cross. He shed his blood. Well, he shed a lot of it before he even got there through his beating that he took. Then on the walk to Calvary, I'm sure more came out. And then he got put up on the cross and even more came out. And then they shoved a spear in his side. And that's when blood and water came pouring out. Oh, by the way, be sure to check out my latest bit shoot video talking about water coming out. And how remdesivir is the only approved FDA treatment for covid for those of you or your loved ones who end up in ICU. And it tells what that drug does to people. Please check it out. It's very urgent. To be shared. Watched and shared. It's not very long. By this we know that we have come to know him. If we keep his commandments. The one who says... I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Do you think John was mistaken? If you come to say, I know Jesus, I'm born again, I know I'm good enough, I'm going to heaven, but you don't keep his word mainly because you part of it you don't agree with. You don't want to agree with it, or you just don't know it. What is it, Hosea 4, 6, when people perish for lack of knowledge? What a lot of ignorance is going on. It's separating the wheat from the tares right now, right? All right, let's move on. But whoever keeps his word in him, the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one it was perfected. It's a walk. We have once you become a Christian, you have a walk. You have to walk it out. Walk out. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, the scripture says. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk. In the same manner as he, Jesus, walked. That's verse 6. 1 John 2 verse 7. Beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Those 
I'm going to pause right here again and say those who are in the darkness are getting even darker. It's getting even darker. And those who are in the light are getting even lighter. Those who are in the darkness can really hardly stand to be around us. Do you all find that to be true? Or are you still real buddy buddies with the world? Your friends that don't believe in Jesus like you do. That have maybe been already changed. You know what I mean. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now. Or you could say even still. The one who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. And John means those who love their neighbor as their self. Everybody. You don't have to be buddy-buddy with those who are in the darkness, people, to show you love them. Think of what would Jesus do. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I have written to you, children, because you know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. This section is titled, Do Not Love the World. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And this goes for women too. He's talking to men, young men, fathers, but it goes for everybody. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. And we're fixing to see that. We're fixing to see it, y'all. Verse 18. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you heard that Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. This was written, this was like worded like it was written this year. Is it not? How living and active is the word of God? Do you know that's a scripture? The word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. A lot of it has double meanings. Like the word apostasy. The falling away. For the great day of the Lord will not come until the great falling away has happened. And it's happening now. And it also means the taking away. Defection. The bride of Christ leaving. All right. So let me repeat that. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you heard that Antichrist is coming... He is actually already on here. He's already served two terms. And will be revealed after the departure of the bride. Even now many antichrists have appeared. That's right. There's one in office now. There was one in office before him. They are antichrist spirits and work for him. All right. Verse 18. I'm sorry, 19. Yeah, that's a 9. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. 
For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it would be shown that they all that they all are not of us. Wow. No wonder he wanted me to go back to the beginning and read from the start. The Antichrist spirit overtook those who went out from among us. They were Christians. They still think they are. But now they're part Antichrist. I will leave it at that. How sad. Ignorance. My people perish for lack of knowledge. They didn't know. They thought it was just another one. You know. Another one of those would keep them from getting sick. Instead of trusting in God and claiming Psalm 91 verse 10, no plague shall enter into my body or tent or dwelling. However you want to look at it. No plague will enter into my dwelling. No plague will enter into me. Verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you all know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth. But because you do know it. And because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar? But the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ, this is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. Now, back in this day and age, he might be talking about Jews who say they have the Father but didn't believe in Jesus. But do you see how it could also be written for us today? You see, we have to think outside the box with a lot of scripture. You can't just pinpoint it down to, well, this was talking about back then. It was, but it's also talking to us today. All right. So this is the Antichrist, the one who denies the father and the son. Um, whoever denies the son does not have the Father. The one who confesses the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. I believe he's talking about when you first, when the Christian... They called it the way in the beginning. It was not called Christianity in the beginning. He's talking about, as for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. Because people were already trying to change the gospel message. Saying, oh, you don't have to do this. But you do have to do that. We still have to be circumcised. And we still have to uh, keep the Sabbath. See, they were already starting to change. The Jewish converts wanted to change back into some of the old ways. And the Greek converts wanted to not do some other things. Or do things they used to do in their Greek ways. You see what I'm saying? They were changing things already way back then. So he's saying what you heard in the beginning, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Now this section is called the promise of eternal life. This is the promise which he himself made to us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. As for you, this is the verse that I came to my remembrance this morning. As for you, the anointing which you received from him abides in you and you have no need 
for anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in him. Now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. That's verse 29 in the end of this chapter. So I'm going to drop this down and say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, this little teaching or scripture reading, and over each and every one of us, our devices, all of them. And may the Lord give me the brains to learn how to transfer video from a tablet to my computer because it makes a nice sharp video. I like it. And I could take it to the park and do some videos from there. Wouldn't that be nice to have some nature? I could show the trees, the changing colors while I'm talking about the Lord. I mean, it would just be lovely. As long as we are here, I'm going to keep on keeping on and keep trying to keep you encouraged. And keep you in the word if you're not enough already. And whatever. You know, if it helps and blesses one person... I've done a good thing. With that, I'll say bye for now, everybody. I will talk to you later.